Enjoy your meeting. All right, so preparing. Just a reminder, today's meeting is being recorded. Hey, everybody. Um, Living Well Now is so excited to have you on this Wednesday Wisdom Call. This is Angie Lehman from Living Well Now. And I am pleased and privileged, as usual, to, uh, to always work with my family. Um, that's the blessing of our job um, together is that we have joined our best gifts together and synergistically are creating awesome, awesome um, opportunity for our families and for all of your families as the Living Well Now leadership team. So today we have on the call Andy and Andrea Lehman. Um, who are diamond leaders in Young Living, who are rock star motivators, influencers, uh, includers, and just all around great people. Um, very humble, very graceful and gracious, um, and also very generous. There's some words that come to mind when I think of you guys. Um, we do appreciations a lot in the family, so you might have heard those words a time or two. <laughs> I feel like we're sitting around the yeah, usually we're sitting around the dinner table, and um, and usually it starts with a hug or a kiss from one of your amazing children. My niece and nephew, Grant and Bennett, um, are are awesome as well. And um, I just feel so honored, though, that you guys are taking time today uh, for our Wednesday Wisdom Call. Um, one of the things that we get a lot of questions about as leadership is, uh, what do you do about family, and how do you work with a spouse? Um, how do you work with a spouse at this? Can everyone still hear me okay? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, how do you work with a spouse in this business? How do you um, stay in love with each other? Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's 10 years this year um, of your wedding anniversary. Am I right on that? You are wrong. Uh, 11, 11, because my 11. son is going to be 11, and I was super sick and pregnant with him when you were married. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be celebrating our anniversary at the Lady Antebellum concert. At convention. Oh, are you going to have them sing you a special song? Yeah, you'll have to start. Welcome. Yeah, you'll have to start listening to their music to decide yeah, what. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm not their music. Maybe two songs. Okay, so oh, yeah. so the question is how how to do family and this business. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's our focus for today. Yep, that's our question. So do you want to start? Do you want to start there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really quickly, I wanted I wanted to feed back to you um, the word running buddy. I've been hearing that a lot from Richard Blissbrook, the author of For Your Career. And so as you were talking about us introducing us, I just wanted to say that I'm thankful that you've been my running buddy for the last, you know, figuratively and um, in real life sometimes you're my running buddy. But um, <laughs> just that, that you know, in this, in this business as in any any kind of, of work where you're working for yourself, there's often a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, and we've seen that over over the last several years, the ups and downs and days where we feel great and excited about the business and days where we have felt discouraged. And what's beautiful is that I know that I can call you up and I can vent to you and I can laugh with you and I can do all of those things. <laughs> But Richard Bliss Brooks calls out a running buddy that when you're when you're building a network marketing company, it can be very lonely. But if you have a running buddy, somebody that you know when 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 you hold a class and nobody shows up to it, somebody that you can call up or somebody that's there with you because you were doing the class together, where you guys can just laugh it off, things that would have been detrimental or, or devastating suddenly become humorous. So thanks for being my running buddy, Anne. Well, and, and I can remember I, you said this morning on a video that you made that uh, there were lots of times when we started out that this hap- that that happened. <laughs> yeah, that it was just us. <laughs> Absolutely. So how, so how do we go from how do we go from that place of five years of hobbying um, and really not treating this as a business to where you guys are today, um, really plugged in and duplicating success in amazing and wonderful ways? And how have you how have you done that together? What have what have been the the key pieces that you would say? Well, I think the biggest thing was shared vision. That we we came to a place. You know, it was in 2012. Well, backpedaling in 2007, we were introduced to the 
2006? 2007. Christmas of 2006. Christmas of 2006, we were introduced to the oils, but I don't think we actually got our account until 07. And, um, you know, it was, it, we wanted we wanted a business almost right away. I mean, after I was hooked on the oils, I was the one that came to, to you and Deb and I was like, dude, we've got to build a business. This is awesome. You know, these oils are amazing. So for, for those five years, we wanted this. We wanted a business, but the vision wasn't there. And the belief wasn't there. And so we would take actions, you know, here and there, occasionally when we wanted to. But because there was no belief behind it, it just didn't really lead anywhere. So I would say it was, you know, 2012, I went to, we both went to convention, but I went to a class that really rocked me in a good way and fired me up. And, um, I, you know, I shared that with Andy. And then when did you read Before Your Career, Andy? Before Your Career came out of convention in 2012. And so honestly, yeah, we were all we were all crazy about the oils for those first five years, but um, that book really put everything into perspective. I'm a science guy, I'm an investment-minded guy, and because of that, before your career spoke to me greatly, and I would say it uh, transformed things for a lot of people. Yeah, so things just kind of came together, I think, for us in 2012, where we both saw it finally, and it's the it wasn't until 2012 where I even started doing that personal work, where I started, you know, looking at what are the fears that I have and, and, and starting to face them and starting to work through things and um, listening to stuff all of the time. You know, I went from not listening to any personal development stuff to, like, being obsessed with it. What else can I read? What else can I listen to? Who else who's gone before me can I, you know, glean something from? And so that became a daily activity um, starting in 2012. Yeah, I think that, you know, that personal development piece is huge because um, well, there, there, there's some graphic I've seen where, you know, it spends time talking about people that um, are, uh, I don't know, that are moving along in life, don't spend a lot of time talking about people, but they spend time talking about ideas. And um, when you are plugged into personal development, you, you are constantly working on ideas. You have fresh ideas, um, you're bouncing things off of one another, and that's what keeps things exciting, in my opinion. So listening to that motivates. I mean, I, I listen to stories after or story after story after story from people, um, and that just pumps me up. So, yeah, if you're not doing that, I strongly encourage you to get plugged into something, and we have plenty of suggestions for you if you need some. Why don't you just rattle off a couple right now for our listeners, Andy? Well, this is um, my favorite show in the morning. It's uh, Chris Brown. This is not the musical artist, Chris Brown. This is... Um, <laughs> Chris Brown from uh, Dave Ramsey's office, um, stewardship.com. He has a 25-minute um, podcast, more or less, that you can listen to, and um, he's just awesome. I mean, the guy is just super encouraging and positive, and uh, he works on finance a lot, but he brings in um, relationship pros. He brings in uh, business pros. So just lots of different people that he interviews and um people that he talks to about their stories and their successes from having nothing to growing into, you know, into a, a really successful life. So anyway, that's that's probably my favorite thing that I listen to on a daily basis. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Andrea, you go for it. Um, well, <laughs> I, I love, there's a book called The Slight Edge yeah. and another one called The Magic of Thinking Big. I think that's the title, Magic yep. of Thinking Big. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, love those two. I, you know, the first one we read after the 2012 convention was Think and Grow Rich, so for sure that one. Um, and that's just more about mindset. It's funny because when I started reading that, I I, I told the story that I, I tried to hide the title because I still had a lot of that scarcity mentality in me that um, I think I adopted from, from some of my upbringing where I, I felt bad about the idea of wanting to have money. And so... Um, I've I've gotten over that for the most part in the last three and a half years, but it's okay to want to have wealth. Um, it's exciting actually to to grow wealth and to be able to do really awesome things with your money. Um, so yeah, so that that one kind of rocked all of us, and I think you and and Deb and me when we came back from convention. But yeah, just anything and everything. Anytime I hear somebody who is having success in their business talk about a book, I write it down. 
and I usually go right onto Amazon Prime and um, order it. So I have I have quite a stack of books right now that um, I need to start. I have a little bit of book ADD. I usually have seven or eight books going at the same time, but it's fun. You can't. I just can't get enough of it. Um, what, what's the what's the adage that says learners are earners and readers are leaders? Yeah. Or vice versa, leaders are readers. Yeah. Earners so I'm are focusing, learners. I'm, I'm focusing on. I just pulled out some um, John Maxwell stuff actually this morning because I want to focus more on leadership type books right now. So and he's he's a master at that. So I'm excited to dig in. Yeah, and I just want to encourage you if you're um, not a reader. Because um, I will admit, I um, tried to graduate from college, setting a new record for the least amount of pages read in college, and uh, I think I may have succeeded. Um, I just didn't read a lot in college. I didn't really have an interest. I mean, it really has something to do with uh, your interest in, in the story you're reading, obviously. But I've grown a lot from um, audio stuff. I listen to tons of stuff, and, um, you know, what goes in comes out. Like what you put into your mind, you end up find yourself speaking some of those same things, and uh, that's really awesome. So, yeah, aud audio, um, there's Audible. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Audible, but I definitely check that out. It's a um, an Amazon deal. And literally 10 to 15 minutes a day. And mine usually comes right before I go to bed, you know, 10 o'clock um, at night. I'm in the bath, and... I'm reading. So that's my reading time. Other than that, it's usually, just like Andy said, it's usually listening to audios, listening to podcasts. Um, I really like, um, uh, uh, excuse me, Richard Bliss Brooks' um, podcast. What's it called, Ange? Heroes Network and Marketing. Network Marketing, Marketing Heroes. Mm -hmm. Network Marketing Heroes. So that's a good one. Those are great recommendations. And like you said at the beginning, it really did become about belief in the business and a shared vision between the two of you. And I appreciated you saying that you're a finance guy. And so the four-year career really spoke your language um, pretty specifically um, in terms – can you give us a quick overview of why that – tech? like why would that be a book you would ask have women um, show their husbands or go through with their husbands? Or, or would there be another sort of financial one that you would add to that? Yeah, totally. Um, the book that Andrea mentioned earlier, The uh, um, Slight Edge, I recommend that one too. If you don't understand what compounding is uh, when it comes to investing, learn about that. That's a thing that I just want to try to teach everyone that I come into contact with um, because compounding is what helps us to grow our finances. Um, and then when it comes to network marketing, it's geometric progression, which is kind of the equivalent. You know, you start with recommending the product that you love to one person, they happen to love it, and then they recommend it to someone else, they love it, and they recommend it to someone else. I mean, that's how this thing works. I mean, this is just what Young Living is about and uh, what's helped us. So th that's huge. And then, um, yeah, the four-year career was just, it was explaining that to me. It's, it's a different investment. So if you don't know anything about investments, I I recommend that you, you start reading um, and learning because when it comes down to it, at the end of our working lives, we get to choose um, who we count on. We either count on ourselves, what work we've done while we were working financially, or we count on the federal government with Social Security. Um, and Social Security scares me, to be honest with you, just that it's not going to be nearly enough for everyone as, as life and time goes on. So we have to start thinking now about our future and, um, you know, just a just a really quick um, concept for you. Um, think about we call it a financial portfolio. A portfolio is um, basically different baskets of money that you have. Um, it could be cash that you have for emergencies. It could be um, your mortgage that you're working to pay down, so eventually you have no mortgage debt. Um, it could be you're investing in mutual funds. Um, this young living business is a is a um, an income stream. Um, you know, this income stream has turned out to be significantly more than I ever anticipated, and it is, um, it is very, very valuable um, if you compare it to any other investment. So I, I would really encourage you to think about that and when you go to share with others to help them understand that because, um, you know, it's more than just a, a physical health thing. It is a financial future and legacy thing. So... Does that help, Ange? 
Yeah, thank you for that. I think um, hearing you speak about some of those concepts like compounding or geometric progression um, or building a portfolio is a language that women haven't necessarily been encouraged to learn. And as, right. as a business owner, I think those are important concepts um, for women to not just um, learn and own for themselves, but also to be able to express those to other women and also men um, so that so that we are looking more healthily at our at our financial goals. So thank yeah. you for that. Uh, okay, and you, do you mean to talk about the compound effect or slight edge? I think it talks a little about. There's also another book called The Compound Effect, but I think Slight Edge talks about um, our choices, our daily yeah. choices, and how it adds up and it compounds into something. So I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the story I remember is, of uh, you know, you take good care of your body. You know, you put good things in after good thing after good thing, and eventually you're going to say, wow, I feel good. I feel like I look pretty good, too. And um, the same thing goes with your finances. If you start putting a little bit of money away, you know, over time, that ends up compounding and growing into something you didn't really realize was possible. So think of your, your finances, your relationships, your health, all in the same terms, and think about how the daily decisions you make, whether how, you know, even though they might seem really small, but they end up compounding and becoming something really, really important. Well, and and Andy, thank you for that other title too, the compound effect. That one's by Darren Hardy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and and what? Andre is the credit for remembering that one. Yeah, and um, as a reminder that you know this is a this is a good conversation for any healthy couple in their relationship to discuss. Um, issues of portfolio and finances and long-term savings and planning and, and preparation um, for legacy planning. Um, and so that shared vision, um, initially when the business first kind of took off in 2012, was that was that kind of the impetus that gave you the um, just sort of the, 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 the freedom to explore this and to launch this? I mean, let's talk practically about how how that how that funneled down into your support of Andrea, into how time was managed with small children. You had a three-year-old and a six-month-old at the time, ish. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, that that year was intense. I think Andy and I would both say <laughs> that it was very intense because you know he's working, um, teaching two little ones at home, and then working to launch this business with a big goal of being able to stay home after that that year of teaching. And so it was important, and I think it was very helpful that we were both on the same page. So he knew the value in building, and so the sacrifices that had to be made to make that happen were made more easily or more readily because we had those conversations and we were on the same page. We knew where we were going. Um, so it was a lot of, you know, evenings, me, evenings away, teaching classes or teaching classes on weekends. It was, you know, getting up an hour early to, to work on emails or Facebook stuff, you know, before um, the day we get started with the kids and getting to school. Um, there was a lot of Andy having to help, you know, more than he already did with, like, housework and, and making food and watching the kids and, you know, all those kind of things. And if if Andy had not had that shared vision of where we were going, you know, it, there, it would have been a lot more stress, I think, on our relationship than what it was. So I don't know, Andy, from your perspective, especially for um, people who may be listening whose spouse isn't necessarily on, on board at this point with them building a business, what what would you say in terms of, like, trying to help the other, the spouse see the vision? Yeah, well, I will just tell you, <laughs> there, are, uh, there are different people in the world, so um, not everybody is cut out for this. I mean, we can definitely tell you that. Um, but I think you you need to be thinking you need to be thinking long term. That's that's the biggest part. And again, if if you aren't if you aren't even able to talk about your finances, th then this could be a really difficult business to consider. But I would just recommend you get get it figured out. Find a way to sit down and and uh, talk about it. So that's that's the thing for Andre and I. We've always, well, not always, in the beginning we we had it a little rough with our, our conversations about finances, but we uh, stuck with it and um, we do it 
faithfully. We sit down weekly and we look at our finances and that's changed everything for us. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of hard work. I'm not going to tell you that. But uh, as a husband, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of husbands probably come home from work and they just crash out and they're not much of a help. That's kind of um, my vision of some a lot of a lot of men out there. Um, this is one where you know men have to have to buck up and have to step in and say, you know what, um, this is for the this is for the betterment of my family. Um, so yeah, we definitely had that shared vision, and um, it's been it's been an amazing ride, that's for sure. Awesome. Um, there was a question about balancing um, family, health, business, work responsibilities. At the beginning, what was what was balance like? Um, I would say that we were willing to to put aside the idea of balance for a short time because we were both on board with trying to build fast so that I could, you know, leave the district after that year. So things were a lot different in that first year, um, a lot more intense. We were, what does Dave Randy say, like gazelle intensity? Gazelle intensity. <laughs> gazelle intensity that first year. So I don't know it. And honestly, if I would say that there was balance in the first year, we had passion and drive in the first year. So I don't think we ever sat down to watch a TV show or go to a movie or, um, you know, just vegged out much at all that year. It was go, 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 go. Okay, we have a little bit of momentum right now. So we're going to go with it. We're going to push this area. When there wasn't momentum, it was, okay, so what can we do to kind of get, get that back? So it was a lot, yeah, it, we just worked a ton that first year. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know, that's not like the, the pretty answer, but that's the reality of it is that until we got to that place where I could then take that risk of leaving my full-time job to, to pursue this, um, yeah, it was, it was early mornings and late nights and away from home several nights a week to make that happen. There was a lot of so running buddy. There was a lot of running buddy going on. There was a lot of running buddy going on between you and me, a whole lot of it. I'd love to have – I wish we had some of our conversations recorded that we could play back. I think that would be funny. All we have to do is pull out our calendars from those years. I think we'd – yeah, I think we'd see that for sure. Yeah, but there was an excitement in it because we – for the first time in a long time, I had vision for my life, vision for where we were going. You know, I'd been kind of in a rut um, – teaching where it was, you know, it's kind of the same thing every year. And, oh, hmm, am I going to make an extra $200 this year or is it going to be, you know, a $200 cut, you know, from right. the previous year? So it was just, there was a lot of, I loved, I loved the kids. That I never got tired of, but I just was feeling like there's got to be something more to this, you know. There's got, I've got to find something that's going to get me excited to get out of bed. And I know that I found that in this business. Um, there's just so many things about it to get excited about. Any other comments on that? Andy, I had another follow-up question for you if you don't have a... Um, no, I mean, yeah, we definitely worked, worked our tails off in that first year. And it's funny, I do wish we could go back and say, all right, we're, what, was, what were things looking like at that point in time? But, you know, ULA, the ULA concepts, those, those guys, when did they come into the picture, 2013? Mm -hmm. So yeah. 2013. Is when the Ula guys came and you know, started talking about the seven Fs, and uh, you know, I, for, without a doubt, I mean, even though we still run crazy sometimes, and we're just like, "Holy cow, what are we? Where are we right now?" Like, <laughs> we love our lives, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, "All right, we're which bed did we show. wake up in?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, we're we're back home now, and it feels really good because it's been a crazy two months, and that's what we love about this work. But um, yeah, home is still a really good place to be. Um, anyway, and all that craziness. We think about yeah. the seven Fs. They are. How are we doing there? We feel good about it. Yeah, we feel good. Yeah, and my follow up to that is kind of related to your perspective of you know reading in and then okay, so you've you've done the financial piece. You see the logic behind you know the business and and all of that. Now we're talking more about lifestyle. Um, and, you just mentioned the ULA book. I'm also thinking you guys plugged in together to Danny Johnson pretty much right away um, in her First Steps to Success uh, program. 
Um, I, I'd also be curious, Andy, on your perspective, around, because in, the, in that next year or two, you, can, you left your teaching position as well um, to work from home with, uh, with your financial services business. Can you speak to that for a couple of minutes? Yeah, be a little more specific. So you're saying how that how Jane and Johnson affected that? Yeah, and then did that did that impact your lifestyle choice to leave um, a school yeah. position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so we took a leap of faith when Andrea made the jump, and uh, that was uh, you know a little nerve wracking, but it was crazy because I'm not a risk taker for those of you that know me um, very much, and uh, so for for me to say hey go and do this like I you know you're, you're loving it and who knows what you can do when you're you're putting your full attention to it. So she took the leap and um, things were really paying off. And I think it was October or November after she retired in May from teaching and um, when our, our Young Living check went up significantly in one month. And um, for me, that was kind of like the, the moment where it was like, okay, I'm, I'm, if I'm going to recommend that she do this, then what am I doing? What am I telling myself, I need to go and do the same thing. I need to go take a leap, you know, and jump out. So um, I made the call, I want to say January or February of 2015, no, 2014, 2014, um, that I, I went and talked to my principal and said, hey, I'm going to hang it up at the end of the year. Um, I have an opportunity to work at home, you know, with my wife and um, also grow um, my business with my dad. So, um, so that was really cool. And, um, you know, the being an entrepreneur is not a, not easy, and uh, at the same time, it's, it's lots of fun and, lot, and there's a lot of excitement. Um, and so, you know, it was probably it was a really rough first year. I just want to say that I want to recommend that to everyone. If you're listening to this, that you have to give yourself grace in the first year of anything. You know, I went went to teach my first year. I got rocked by the kids. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't even funny. Like kids were eating in class. I didn't know how to tell them to stop. You know, like it was ridiculous. So. You know, my first year of jumping off the, the teaching wagon and into this world of entrepreneurship, I got rocked. I mean, it was like, what am I doing? Who am I? Like, I don't even know if I can do this, you know? Um, but, no, you figure it out. You figure out a groove. Um, and I, I'm in a groove right now. I'm, I'm feeling very blessed and very uh, very groovy. <laughs> and, and, was, and was any of that, I mean, again, the warm and fuzzy stuff of the 7S, of first steps to success and gem studies and and time management time secrets, you know what what were some what were some aha moments or takeaways from those from those for you from a lifestyle standpoint? Yeah, well, Danny Johnson. Yeah, if you have not been to a first steps, I highly recommend it. She uh, she uh, it's upside the head, and uh, really, I mean, she she helps change things dramatically for me. Um, so there are two classes or two um, things that she does, two seminars. One is First Steps, and the second one is Creating a Dynasty. And Creating a Dynasty is where you really work on letting go of some stuff that you kind of have ingrained in your brain. And um, for me, I let go of a fear of success um, that traced back all the way to elementary school. And um, I, I got rid of it. Like, you know, um, yeah, we do. We play small a lot in life. And... It really doesn't serve us well. Um, you know, I'm on this. I'm on this kick. I mean, she she talks about you know what what great things we can do with our money, and I think that's what I want to continue to teach people until the day that I leave this earth is to help people take care of their own financial situation so that they can you know make ends meet and and live live a great life, but then to have more than enough and to be able to just go and pay it pay it forward and go and help people in ways that they can't, they literally cannot help themselves. So, um, yeah, she's just, she's been a huge inspiration and um, changed my mind about myself and changed my mind about network marketing and changed my mind about um, success, to be honest with you. Cool. Yeah. And, and out of that, Andy, now you're doing some work, not out of that necessarily, but as part of this next, calling of yours with um, supporting the Living Well Now business and what Andrea is doing more actively. You and some others have established an Essential Oil Brothers group. I understand the Essential Oils Brothers. Isn't that what we call it? <laughs> Very formal. Uh, sounds very nice. <laughs> sounds yeah, very stuffy, doesn't it? Yeah. 
the EO bros. Um, yeah, I think um, for some of us guys, that, so there are just a handful of guys, it feels like, but a growing handful of guys that are kind of on board with their wives, and we, uh, we're kind of trying to encourage that. I mean, more or less, um, we want to create something where other guys feel comfortable plugging in and getting connected uh, because if your wife's going to have a successful business, you really have to support it and you have to um, either say I'm on board or I'm not. And if you're not on board, then you need to have a hard, hard look at that. You know, if, if you're the, if you're the wife trying to drive this train, um, if you're not getting some support, then, um, you know, that's, that can feel pretty, pretty lonely and pretty ugly. Um, so I, I just encourage you, um, any of you guys that are listening in to get plugged in, be your wife's best customer. That's what we tell, that's what we tell the guys, be your wife's best customer. I mean, learn about the products. Um, there are several ways to do that. One is to just go on the Young Living website, find some products that, uh, that look like they might be for you and uh, find out what they can help you with. Um, I mean, that's what we teach in classes. You know, at some point we'll have an EO Bros um, phone conference call that you can listen into, but, um, if there's a guy leading any sort of a call, listen in. Um, he'll share something with you, I'm sure, that you could benefit from. And there are a ton of Young Living products for men. So that's kind of what the EO Bros are about. We're just trying to help educate guys to help them see that there's tons of value in these products. And then the financial product that Young Living offers is a product that is really, really hard to beat. And you can follow that page on Facebook, right? The EO Bros have their own page, so that can be liked. And then Living Well yep. Now for local events publicizes EO Bros events through our page events. And also, um, when they hit the road, the information will go out on the page. Um, Michelle Piper just wrote in that the EO Bros are coming to Colorado. So very exciting to see when the husbands get involved. So thanks for your leadership in that. Any final comments on, or Andy, on, on your, uh, something you didn't get to mention or something that's just really burning for you? And then we'll open it yeah. up to some Q and A. Yeah, yeah. I think what burns for me is that I'm in love with young living products. Um and and I truly believe you have to be. Um we had a network marketing come a couple of network marketing opportunities that were presented to us um uh, back in the day and none of them spoke to me. Um they just didn't. One was an energy drink and one was some sort of an insurance. And you know, there's a a point that's brought up in the four-year career about would you use this product even if you were not compensated? And hands down, yes, I would use Young Living products if I was not compensated, so if we were not compensated. So that's a really, really important piece. Um, and again, if you're a guy, find some products. You know, I'll just, I'll just list off five products that I couldn't go without. Um, write them down, throw them in your, uh, throw them in your cart. Um, Make sure red. Sulfurzyme, Pure Protein Complete, um, Lavender, and IBS. That's Idaho Blue Spruce. Um, anyway, yeah, you just just find some products to fall in love with. That's the most important thing. And uh, yeah, that's that's my recommendation. Awesome, Andrea, you have an amazing husband. I mean, I grew up with him, so I kind of know. But I, uh, and I, <laughs> but I think it's awesome that, um, Andy, you've taken some time on this call to sort of share your heart and your mission with people. I'm grateful for the ways you two have, um, come to that on together, um, and have, have linked arms and as, as a force to work together at this. Um, any other tips you would leave the group with today? I think that, I mean, I, I think I talked about it. A slightly at the beginning, but the thing that's just been really on my heart recently is we have to just keep working on our belief, you know, belief in self, belief in this business, um, because those things come through. And so in that first year, especially, people are really working on building their their belief, but they want all of the systems and all of the, you know, um, skills like closing and, and and sharing and, you know, finding prospects and all of that stuff, they want that to just come super easy. But until the belief is there that I can do this, that this is a great opportunity for anybody, um, I think it's hard. 
I think the skills are, are more difficult. But once that belief is there, and once you ha- you know I can do this, I've got this, then all of those other things fall into place, you know, a lot easier. And I can remember, I can remember um, four years ago before I went to that 2012 convention, I would have, I would have said. I don't think that I will be successful in Young Living. I don't think I will ever be a Young Living leader. And now I just think back now, like, what if what if I hadn't gone to convention in 2012, first of all? So what if I hadn't decided to work on my mindset? I definitely wouldn't be sitting here today. I would, I would still be teaching, which there's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, a lot of people are building businesses on the side and don't want to quit their day job, but I did want to. Um, but I just think about how different life would be right now if I hadn't gone to convention and I hadn't made a decision, okay, I'm doing this and I'm going to get to work on myself and on learning these skills. So, yeah, just do the work. Do the work because what's on the other side of that work, regardless of how long it takes, um, what's on the other side of that is something that you really want. Some awesome feedback from um, from our listeners today. Some uh, one person wrote inspiring, and someone else wrote, "I can't wait for convention." She's bringing me to tears. I want this so much. So I really appreciate you guys taking those steps to share your hearts today with us. I'm going to unmute everyone as we're wrapping up in case there are questions or points of clarification that are needed. All guests are no longer muted. So if you are live on the call and you don't want to speak, go ahead and mute your own phone with star six or hit your mute button on your phone um, for the for the remaining few minutes of our call. We really appreciate Andy and Andrea taking time with us today. Um, any questions or clarifications that you would like for for them? Okay, so we, um, we're we going to give you a couple of updates about things that are happening with the team um, coming up. Um, first of all, tonight I'm having a class here in Peoria. Um, you're all welcome to come. <laughs> um, it starts at 6.30, and Andrea is having a Now What class tomorrow night at her house in Surprise. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. People don't need to hear this first. Um, Andrea is having a Now What class at 